What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Today, we're gonna jump into a crazy good topic that I really, really love to talk about. This is gonna be about how to achieve your financial goals this year. And I know this probably should have been a video I made like back at the beginning of this month, but one thing I will share with you, and if you know me and you're watching this video, you definitely know this, I don't care for like, new year's resolutions and pretending like a new year is going to be my chance to walk into a brand new dimension where i have no flaws and i'm just going to magically accomplish all these things i've never even started to learn how to do in the first place that's not how i treat the new year anymore i used to do that years and years ago but it just it proved to be not so valuable and the reason i'm actually making this video now is because i feel like at the beginning of January, everyone's so fired up about their new goals and what they're gonna do, and ah, I'm so passionate about this, and then at the end of the month, ah, I'll do it in February. Then February turns to March, next thing you know it's May, then it's October, then the year done ended, and you have done absolutely none of what you listed. I've been there, done that, so I know that pain. And looking at myself, I just feel like I haven't always gone as hard for my goals as I should, even though I'm extremely passionate and there's an extreme amount of feeling behind it, and I think about it all the time, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm putting in the action. So I wanna make this video today to show you how to put that action towards your financial goals. And you could actually apply what I say in this video to any aspect of life, but this is a finance channel, so we're gonna focus on finances today. So we're gonna jump straight into this right now. So the first thing I want you to do is pull out a piece of paper, or better yet, I don't like writing these days, so I don't know how you feel about it, but pull your phone out. Pull out something where you can take notes on and just write out everything about money that either bothers you, troubles you, or it's just something that you would like to do this year that you haven't been able to say that, hey, I've been able to do this last year. I've been able to do this the year before. Like this might be the first time you've ever been able to accomplish one of these goals. Write that stuff down. So write these things down and really make it real life to yourself because it can be easy for our minds to get overwhelmed by everything we need to do, especially when it comes to finances, that we lose track of how many things there are we actually need to do. A lot of times it's not quite as many as we think it is. And that's a good thing because as you start typing, you could be like, man, I really need to pay off this credit card. Or, man, I really need to build my savings account back up. I need to start my emergency fund. I need to start learning about how to invest. I need to start learning about a high yield savings account so I can actually gain interest on the money that I'm saving. Or you might be wanting to increase your income, whatever your want is financially, even if you want to get promoted at work, you need to write these things down. Because as you write things down, there's power behind it. Because now subconsciously, your brain is going to start thinking of how am I going to accomplish this? That's very different wording than saying I can't do this. What makes me think I can do this? This is gonna be hard for me to do. But when you ask yourself, how can I do this? Now your brain is coming up with things behind the scenes. Now here's the thing, once you have everything written down, I want you to now form them as goals. So for example, if something that troubles you is the fact that you're still in credit card debt, obviously your goal is gonna be pay off credit card debt. So I want your goals to start with the verb, like pay off and then credit card debt. That's a very hyper specific thing. If you have multiple credit cards that you owe on, make them specific. Pay off Capital One credit card. Pay off Chase credit card. Make them individual. For another example, it may bother you that you don't have a few thousand in your savings account yet. So now you're gonna put something like save $5,000 in savings account number one. Save my first $1,000 within my emergency fund. It may bother you that you haven't even gotten started learning about more things about personal finance or that you haven't opened a high yield savings account yet. I have a link in the description for you, by the way, if you want to do that. But it will be something as simple as open up a high yield savings account. So just by this step alone, your brain is going to be buzzing with all kinds of ideas and everything that bothers you and everything that troubles you or just things that you genuinely want to be able to do financially for yourself saving up for a house. Really, there are no limitations with this stuff. Just go crazy with everything that you wanna do financially this year. Because the one thing that you have to master in order to achieve your goals consistently is to draw that mental line between where you are now and where you wanna be. And this doesn't have to be some big lofty thing like five, 10 years from now, this is where I wanna be. 
Right now, just focus on where you wanna be by the end of the year. And here's a quick game-changing step to do in between step one and two real quick. Every single day, once you finalize your list of goals, every single day, put it on your calendar. Literally, I know this sounds crazy, or maybe not crazy, but maybe you haven't heard of this before. Put it on your calendar, like on Google calendars or something, at whatever time that works for you. Just set like a 10 minute frame, 10 to 30 minute frame to just review your goals and just look at them. You do need that aspect of vision and you do need to constantly remind yourself. That's, that's why whenever you have things that you wanna do financially or in life, they're in the back of your mind, but sometimes you forget about all the things you said you wanted to do. So it's extremely important to remind yourself every day, looking at your goals. And it doesn't have to be for that long. It could be for five minutes, however long, but put it on your calendar so you always know to do it and set it for the same time every single day and just put it on repeat so that way you don't even have to think about it anymore. You don't have to remember anymore. Now your calendar is gonna say, hey, it's time to go ahead and look at your goals. And then from there, I want you to make a list every day. It only, it's gonna take a few minutes to do this. Three to five ideas that will help you get closer to those goals per day. It may seem like there's not that many things per day to improve on to get to your goals, but I promise you there are. And you're gonna be thinking outside the box. You're gonna be like, man. So for example, if your goal is to get promoted at work, for example, now you're gonna start thinking about things. Maybe I should start looking up interviews on the role that I'm trying to achieve. That way I can get insight on the mindset behind that job and what employers are looking for to for me to fill that role. If I wanna contribute more to my 401k, maybe I should look up the amount of money it's gonna take from my account in order to achieve that so I know what I'm getting myself into. There's these little miniature steps along the way that compound to a very big impact. That's, that's all I wanna say. I don't wanna spend too much time on it, but that is a game-changing thing. I've been doing that since 2019, and it has given me tremendous results. But anyway, step two is the fun part. You know what you're gonna do now? Break it down month by month. There's 12 months in the year, and you may have 12 or more goals. Don't worry about that. Just worry about this. Look at what's at the top of your priority list when it comes to your goals. I would say break down your top three goals that you have and understand that it, it might not be something that you achieve in exactly a month. It might actually take three or four months to achieve one of your big financial goals. That's fine. But find out your top three and then assign a month to them. And then for each big goal, assign two smaller, like easier financial goals for you to achieve. And then you can assign them to one month. For example, you might wanna pay off $5,000 of a credit card. You might not be able to do that inside of a month. It might take four, five, six months to do. That's fine. Or it might even take all year. But if you have that as the big goal and then one of your smaller goals is open up a high yield savings account, open up a Roth IRA, file your taxes, watch a series of interviews for the role that you're wanting to get into, contribute 2% more to your 401k, setting a monthly budget, automating your savings account, setting savings goals, things like this are easy things that you can do that can improve you incrementally over time. That's why it's so important to think about a few ideas per day of what things you could do now to make yourself a little closer to your goals. Things that you can control, not external things that you can't control, but what can you control about your financial future? That's, that's the thing to focus on. And then you know what you do, you break it down by weeks. And I'm not saying to break down every single week for the whole year in one sitting. I'm saying per month. So let's say it's February and this month we're gonna rebuild our savings because we just paid off a big credit card. Cool. We're gonna break down the weeks of February and we're only gonna go one week at a time. And then Monday, what's the task? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The first day could be something like establish the amount of money this month that I want to be able to save. Establish the amount of money this year that I wanna be able to save. Establish how many savings account I wanna to have total and which ones I wanna have in my area of sight and which ones I kinda of want to just set and forget, automate a certain amount and forget and then just have it kinda of go to a savings account off to the side that I don't really look at every single day. Stuff like that. And you can give yourself a few tasks, like two to three tasks per day along that week 
you can look up stuff like what's the best high yield savings account for me and you can look at what the world has to offer and you can look at what is going to work best for you financially and then i promise you if you do something every day towards your financial goal by the end of the month you're going to be much further along than you would be if you didn't do any of this and then once you have all the numbers that are your goals you're going to find these little opportunities throughout the month where you either come into extra money or you didn't spend as much money as you normally would have so as a result now you have more to put towards your savings goal and you might even find yourself going above your savings goal now that's just one example of what one month could be but you see how putting this into practice can really make you start moving and doing these little things every day that add up really big in the future especially if due to february for example for your savings account if due to everything that you're doing you now create systems that allow you to set most of what you're doing in february on autopilot now you don't have to even revisit these things now you've set in stone the number that you want to reach by the end of the year you've set in stone whatever financial automation you want to put in your savings account now you said okay every paycheck five hundred dollars is going towards this savings account you've solidified that you're going to have a high yield savings account that you don't look at every day that x amount of dollars goes to per month and you can fuel the fire to your goal even more by remembering why you're doing it you could be saving for an emergency fund you could be saving for a house you could be saving for something nice because february is the month of valentine's day right but either way you're crystal clear on your goal there's no confusion and you were absolutely going to get there especially if you focus on it every day i didn't even include saturday and sunday if you want to include saturday and sunday include those two as well but this is how you hyper focus on one thing get it done boom next month we're going to focus on something else because now the savings are under control now the savings are automated so i don't even have to think about it anymore it's just going to happen no matter what i do and before i get too carried away for each task that you assign yourself to every day put a little time limit beside it that's going to be a game changing piece of this advice because sometimes when you're just getting started with really hammering down on a certain goal you might find that it actually takes you much much longer than you think to achieve that goal i'll give you a personal example so i have coaching services and relatively the bigger packages that i have are more expensive so one thing i did to improve my business was to put in payment plans to make it more attractive to my customers i gave myself 30 minutes to do it it took me like two hours to do because i was new to the coding behind all this stuff and i was like i don't know what the heck i'm doing i thought it was going to be easy but it wasn't and as I set that time frame, I'm like, okay, I can, I need to reset my expectations for how long it's going to take me to do certain things. I would say give yourself a minimum of 45 minutes to an hour just to get better versed around a certain thing when it comes to money, especially if it's a goal that you're really not knowledgeable on. You, like, for example, you might have several sources of debt, like your car, student loans, credit cards, and you might be fairly new to hammering down on getting rid of debt. So you might not know which one to prioritize, right? So then if you give yourself, let's say, 30 minutes to research which type of debt should I aim for first, you might find that, oh, it's going to take me a little longer than 30 minutes to, to get the answer to this. It might take me an hour, an hour and a half to really not just understand what the answer is, because anybody can just give you the answer, but you need to understand why. You need to understand that the decision you're making isn't just blindly following somebody on the internet or reading a random article. So a lot of times, just give yourself a, a good amount of time during the day, because the thing is, you wouldn't have spent an hour and a half probably doing that even throughout the course of a month if you didn't hyper focus it even if you were like well i'm going to spend a few minutes here to learn about this and i'm going to think about this for the rest of the week but i'm not going to actually do anything about it and then oh it's the weekend let me look up that one video it's 12 minutes okay I, i'm a little more knowledgeable now but i still don't know what to do you know then you kind of find yourself in situations where it's like you feel like you're doing more than you're actually doing, but if you actually sit down for an hour to an hour and a half in a row, like in one sitting, and you really focus on that one thing, it'll be way more effective than 30 minutes here, 12 minutes here, 20 minutes there, and then you forget about it this week because you had life going on and stuff. It's just, you wanna focus on these things. And if you set a daily schedule for yourself and you set a timer next to it, you're gonna be golden.
Now keep in mind, even if you don't follow the exact formula that I gave you in this video, even if you just dedicated one area of your personal finances per month and you do you break everything down between weeks and days, you will still see a drastic improvement because you're focusing on this one goal for a whole month daily, you will do more things toward that goal and you will see more results toward that goal within that month than if you just went throughout life, going to work, going back, and then you know feeling like you're extremely busy. But when you set that time for yourself, that hour per day to just look into one thing, figure out how to open up certain accounts, figure out how to invest, learn incremental changes that you can put into your life to make your finances better. That's going to be the things that gets you closer to your goal. And one thing I will tell you is your goals may come off as intimidating at first and it may feel like it's daunting and you can't really achieve it, but don't let that feeling consume you. Just feel that way and then go for the goal anyway and just see what happens. The worst thing that can happen is, well, I didn't achieve my goal this month, but then you'll have things that you can do to actually improve upon to reach that goal. And if you really can't wrap your head around it, it might be time to hit me up for a free coaching call that I've been offering. Only few people have taken full advantage of this, but I do offer free coaching calls and of course paid coaching calls if you want like months of mentorship. But that's something you can just check out on my website. I have a link in the description for that as well. But anyway, I hope this video helped you and I will give you one more free nugget since you lasted this long in the video. This is extremely, extremely important. If you want to achieve any goal in life in like a fourth of the time that it would normally take you, check out this book called The 12 Week Year. It breaks down goal setting, how to look at your goals and how to achieve them in a quarter of the time that it would normally take you to do. I think that's probably one of the most valuable books I've ever read in my life. And it's an interesting read, it's a good read, and I've read it twice now, and I'm still applying the stuff in that book to this day, and have been since 2021. So I wish I would have learned about it sooner than then, but either way, I wanted to share that with you in this video. That is your last free nugget. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this video and see what you can do to add on to your financial future. And I hope this was of great value to you. But anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.